The January transfer window is finally open here in the Everton takeover rebuild and it couldn't have come sooner for new manager Graham Potter. Everton's recent injury crisis has seen both Jared Branthwaite and new signing Maxim de Kuyper sidelined for three months whilst Jack Harrison's torn ACL means he won't play football again this season. Fortunately, Everton's summer signings Arno Armadojic and Noah Mbamba can step into more prominent roles, and both Graham Potter and Everton's new owners have been proactive in lining up some additional defensive depth in the form of Leicester City's James Justin. The hard-working and versatile fullback set Potter back 12 million, but he'll be an ideal short-term replacement for De Kuyper and can provide some depth on both flanks going forward. With less than £10.5 million left in the bank, however, and no new money forthcoming from the board until the summer, Potter first had to secure some extra cash, and that came in the form of an offer from Burnley for Neil Mope. The controversial striker was given a chance to revive his Everton career under Graham Potter's familiar and nurturing wing, but animosity between Mope and the Everton fans had grown too deep and his short time at the club comes to an end as he departs for a fee of a little over 5 million. The addition of James Justin also meant that Philip Mwene's loan spell on Merseyside could be cut short. Mainz eager to regain the services of their fullback now that it seems a long-term move is no longer on the cards. And with Noah Mbamba now the only loanee left on Everton's books, that created an opportunity for Graham Potter to add another exciting young talent to the squad securing centre forward Justin Deal from Cologne. Deal arrives on loan initially, but as is the case with Mbamba, the club have the option to make the deal permanent in the summer, securing a 3.5 million buy option in exchange for paying 70% of Deal's wages. Those moves leave less than 2 million in the bank here in season one of the rebuild. And unless a big club come in with an offer that we're forced to accept, it looks like all of Graham Potter's business in January is going to be complete within the first few days of the window. Whilst James Justin will have to wait to make his debut, only finding a place on the bench, both Deal and Mbamba featured in our first game of the episode, a third round FA Cup fixture versus Blackpool at Goodison Park. Deal was brought in as a false nine rather than a true striker in the Beto mould, and that's where he lines up. Lewis Dobbin starts alongside Reese Nelson just behind him, whilst Dwight McNeil and Noah Mbamba start in a back five whose responsibility it will be to protect Jal Virginia as he makes his first start of the season. And we got off to a bright start in the game, Dwight McNeil's first shot being parried away by the Blackpool goalkeeper before he tucked his second effort neatly into the bottom corner just moments later. McNeil had a chance to double his tally for the game with a free kick in a dangerous area just outside the Blackpool box. But rather than nestling into the top corner, it skipped off the head of one of the men in the wall. Blackpool then had a chance to level the scoring with a free kick of their own, but a big save from Jal Virginia maintained the one goal Everton lead. Blackpool did managed to find an equaliser just after the break though working a short corner to the edge of the box and then finding the corner low and away to Jordan Pickford's right and whilst Justin Deal did show some flashes of brilliance at times dropping into that false nine position to collect and distribute the ball it was ultimately up to the big man Beto to come on and score the winner just like he did against Ipswich Town in a recent episode Beto wrenched the ball away from a Blackpool defender, this time deep in his own half. He carried the ball all the way into the Blackpool half and then eventually into the penalty area where he slotted a neat, tidy right-footed finish past the helpless Blackpool goalkeeper. Beto's becoming something of a cult figure amongst Everton fans and really making the case that he should stay at the club for the long term. And it was Beto's goal that ended up being the difference between the two sides, so we do progress to the next round of the FA Cup. Which brings us to our featured game of the episode as we host Unai Emery's Aston Villa at Goodison Park. Aston Villa have lost Ollie Watkins to Atletico Madrid, but they've added Ben Yedder as his replacement and they do persist with that 4-2-4 formation. Whereas Graham Potter does hand James Justin his first start as an Everton man at left wing back. I'm going to do Onana and James Garner, the pairing in midfield, and Dwight McNeil and Reese Nelson support Beto up front. So without further ado, let's head over to Goodison Park and see if we can get a result against this strong Aston Villa side. So back at Goodison Park, back in the Premier League and back in search, a 
of three points rather than a place in the next round of the cup. Today we are trying to really establish ourselves as a top half of the Premier League side. James Garner's done well there to extend a foot to collect a wayward pass there from Onana. Does relinquish possession shortly after though. So Aston Villa likely to be a tough opposition today. A strong bench as well as a strong start in 11. So I think we're going to have our work cut out for us, but I certainly think we're capable of rising to the challenge. In the last episode, we certainly rose to the challenge, beating Tottenham Hotspur 2-0 away from home. And I wouldn't put Aston Villa quite at the level of Tottenham Hotspur in terms of opposition, at least at least in, in game. In real life, maybe I would. But here in this save, I don't think I would. Jordan Pickford quick off his line to deal with it. And he instead has sent it into his own net. What a disastrous start. Just as I was talking about rising to the occasion and rising to the challenge. We've done quite the opposite and sunk to a new low. Absolutely calamitous miscommunication between James Tarkovsky and Jordan Pickford. The centre-back trying to deal with it. The goalkeeper coming out to do the same. And between them, our captain and vice-captain end up sending the ball into the back of our own net. Absolutely disastrous start to the game. And if we were going to rise to the challenge today, we are only going to have to rise higher because we've made the challenge even more difficult for ourselves than it was initially. We're 1-0 down after five minutes. Aston Villa into the Everton box again, trying to make it 2 in 10. Tarkovsky does clear this time. Onana into Beto. Dwight McNeil away on the left, but instead he finds Reese Nelson on the right. And Nathan Patterson's made a good run. Reese Nelson in turn has found him. Nelson once more, James Garner. James Justin in space on the left-hand side. Not quite quick enough to get there, though. So a full debut today for James Justin. I'm going to have to be very wary, particularly in these next couple of episodes, about calling him Justin James, because I'm always very tempted to do that. I've got it right the first couple of times that I've brought him up here. But we'll have to keep an eye on that going forward. Looks to be a really good signing, though. Paid a little bit more for him than maybe I would have liked. About 12 million. But I think he's going to be crucial over the next couple of months. Providing cover for the injured Maxim de Kuyper. And going forward as well. He's so versatile. Can play on the left or on the right. Equally comfortable. That's really good from Ben Yedda. Into the box. Good save from Jordan Pickford. Came off his line to smother that well. And Justin's high, high work rates, I think, are going to be really useful as well in that wing-back role. We do ask the wing-backs to do as much work going forward as we do back in defence. So I think high, high work rates for those players, like we have with De Kuyper, I think that's absolutely essential. James Justin has those high, high work rates too, so I think he's going to fit right in. Justin Deal, I think is a bit more of a project. I'm not sure he's going to fit right in, but I think he is one to watch for the future as Justin hooks the ball away. James Tarkovsky up towards Beto, who wins the header. Onana releases to James Justin. There's Dwight McNeil. Justin can't quite find him, though. And an Aston Villa man is down just outside the centre circle. Diaby on the ball, I think. Potentially that was Ben Yedder. He seems to have picked up a knock. Or maybe it was Emery Chan. I'm not quite sure. Onana with a foot in. There is Ben Yedda. Neither player seems to be nursing an injury. So perhaps just a little bit slow to get up. But no lingering injury to worry about. As Kamara's shot goes wide. Pickford diving to make sure. Not 100% sure he would have got there if it was on target. And Unai Emery not pleased with the finish. 
It was a decent opportunity for Aston Villa. A half chance, you'd say. But back to Justin Deal. I think he's going to be a really hot prospect going forward. And I would be surprised if we didn't end up taking up his three and a half million buy offer. But it could be a while before he grows and really becomes a true first team player. 2-0. 2-0. Mr. Diaby doubles the lead. And it's been a terrible start for the home side. 2-0 down after 20 minutes. We gifted them the first goal. And, I mean, although it was an Aston Villa player that actually put the ball in the back of the net this time, we've kind of gifted them the second as well. Poor defending. Godfrey doesn't come across quick enough to get the block in. Armadogic just not quite aggressive enough in his challenge either. And you can't give Musa Diaby that kind of space. He is going to punish you every time. No Ollie Watkins for Aston Villa, of course. So Diaby going to have to step up into his boots. Big boots to fill for certain. But Diaby, I would say, capable of filling them. That's a poor challenge. And it is a yellow card for Leon Bailey. James Justin, the victim of the challenge. We could do without another injury to our back five. Branthwaite, of course, out for three months. Maxim de Kuyper, the same. And although he's not part of the defensive line nominally, Jack Harrison, certainly a, con uh, a contributor on defence. Getting back, tracking his men, sitting in front of the likes of Nathan Patterson and Maxim de Kuyper. Good challenge by James Garner. Opted to go with the two defensive options in midfield today in Garner and Onana. Garner with a bit more of a creativity going forward. And we saw that there. Not quite as much as Abdullah Decore though. Thought going with the two defensive options might make us a bit more solid and give us a, a foundation to kick on and get a result here. But it's obviously not been the case so far. It really has been the back line that's caused the issues in the game so far rather than the midfield not too much Onana or Garner could have done about either of the goals to be fair to them Reese Nelson three Aston Villa defenders for company there's James Garner and it's another robust challenge this one fair according to the referee I'm sure James Garner would agree and that's a poor pass first into James Tarkovsky's feet and then by James Tarkovsky himself just had to rush to get the ball away. Looking for Beto up front, but the hurried pass was off target. And Aston Villa just worked the ball around in midfield now. Into Diaby once more. Onana's there to force him wide, which he does. James Tarkovsky. And James Justin trying to stop the cross, which they do. And Justin forces a goal kick. Half an hour gone, I think we've... I'm not sure we've entered the Aston Villa penalty area at this point. We've barely possessed the ball in their half. We certainly haven't had a shot on goal yet. Really poor start. And I thought with the way that Aston Villa were going to line up, we might have a bit of an advantage today with our, our system versus theirs. The 3-4-3 versus the 4-2-4. The I thought it might leave them... A little bit light in midfield. But then leave them with holes in behind with those two wide men so far forward as well. Really hasn't worked out that way so far. One thing we are going to miss with James Justin on the right hand side rather than on the left hand side rather. Rather than De Kuyper is those whipped crosses from De Kuyper. When he picks up the ball just inside the opposition half on his left foot. And he whips those crosses in. It's so dangerous. And, and James Justin, he's, he's not going to be able to do that. He's not going to be able to match De Kuyper in that respect. Kamara into Diaby. We have to watch the cutback here, which Armadogic does. Forces a shot on goal, which Jordan Pickford can comfortably save. Well positioned at his near post. And Emre Chan is going to put in the corner. Or will he go short to Diaby? He goes short to Diaby. Nathan Patterson there. Along with James Garner. How Torres takes the ball down. And feeds it in. To 
two. I think Morgan Rogers. But his left footed shot flashes wide. Again, Jordan Pickford dives to make sure. And I think probably he would have been equal to that one if it was on target. I thought we'd see Aston Villa pressing high today as well, which I thought would work out in our favour. We have certainly seen them pressing high, especially from goal kicks as we've seen there with DRB stepping onto the toes of our centre-backs immediately. But we haven't been able to create any space in behind to exploit the high press. And there's Morgan Rogers doing the same thing again. I think today might be a day where we make a change at half-time, not just in terms of personnel, but in terms of system. Because we have barely been able to get out of our own half in this 3-4-3. Godfrey can't win it back off Rogers. Cut back to Ben Yedder. Laid off to Kamara on the edge of the box. There's Diaby once more. Good challenge by Nathan Patterson. Godfrey has to clear. Trying to find the space to do that. And eventually he does. And Beto could be onto this. Doesn't quite have the pace to get there ahead of Konza. Diaby. Into Rodgers. We do well to force the ball backwards rather than forwards there. Diaby and Rodgers linking up nicely initially, but... Did well to force the pass to a third option there rather than to allow the two to continue to play. And it's going to be out for another Aston Villa corner. So Diaby the short option again. And again, Patson and Garner there to try and shut it down. Ben Yedder, loose touch. Reese Nelson, can he come away with it? Just about manages to get the ball to Beto. James Garner through the middle. Beto with the ball at his feet on the wing, and there's 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 nothing on really. Nothing on for Beto. And he has to turn all the way back and release to Ben Godfrey. We just didn't have the bodies forward to overwhelm Aston Villa there. James Justin on the left hand side. There's Onana. And again, there's just so few options. Aston Villa getting so deep when they don't have the ball. Pressing high initially, but look how deep they're defending. Diaby inside the centre circle. But all other 10 players sitting in a low block there really for Aston Villa. Defending in a similar way to the way Arsenal like to defend. And the, the way that they especially defended against Man City at the weekend. But it's going to be a 2 0 Aston Villa lead at half time. We don't really look to be able to. It's actually gone down as two own goals. A Diaby own goal I saw there on the match events. But I'm going to look at changes for this second half. So I don't like what I've seen so far. We've done fine in terms of possession in that first half. Only seeding 55% to Aston Villa. And they haven't played too many more passes than we have but we have zero shots on goal and obviously zero xg as a result so we're going to need to try and create something in the second so we are indeed changing shape for this second half very important making one substitution as well it's going to be james tarkovsky off and justin deal on so the new signing plays in his second game for everton already in his young career here well, we've gone to a 4-3-3 attack formation here. So pretty much a variant of the 4-2-3 really rather than the 4-3-3. The um, that's not what I meant to say at all. I will uh, correct myself after this attack as James Garner tries to play in Beto. And Onana gives the wall away to McNeil. A variant of the 4-2-3-1 is what I had meant to say. Quite McNeil wins the ball back. There is Justin Deal. Plays it off to Reese Nelson. Skips past one Aston Villa man. Any round the second. No, he can't. Pressure him. Moreno high up the field, though. Same with Beto. So we've gone to a flat back four with James Justin and Nathan Patterson at fullback. Ahmed Ojic and Ben Godfrey. We've kept our two paciest centre-backs on because we will be pressing Aston Villa slightly higher up the field. And we don't want to be relying on James Tarkovsky to be making recovery runs back towards his own goal. We've got Amadou Onana and James Garner in centre midfield. 
as Aston Villa run the ball out of play. Justin Deal sitting just in front of them in the number 10. And then we've got, of course, Dwight McNeil, Reese Nelson and Jared Beto. Jared Beto, I've done it again. I can't get that out of my head, Jared Beto. It's the first time in a couple of episodes, but Jared Beto makes his appearance again. Jared Beto up front alongside Reese Nelson and Dwight McNeil. So really more of a 4-2-3-1 than a 4-3-3. But nominally in the game of 4-3-3 attack formation. Justin clears to Reese Nelson. Skips away from an Aston Villa man again. And Justin Deal makes a run through the middle. Reese Nelson has found him. And Justin Deal is in space. He has pace to get in behind as well. Martinez comes out and makes the save. So good at that, Martinez. Always quick off his line. He's excellent in terms of one-on-one -on -one saves. And he's made another one there. Justin Deal potentially got a little bit too ahead of himself. Should have shown a, a little bit more composure to slow down and really make sure of the finish. And the cross from Reese Nelson ends up finding Emmy Martinez. We should be on the board here. That's our first real chance of the game. And I think we should have taken it. Like we said with Justin Deal, though, he is a bit of a project. He's a long-term option rather than being expected to come into the side and make a difference right now. He's very young, very raw. And we have seen that there. Good clearance from Arma Dodjic. There's Justin Deal. Finds Dwight McNeil with the header. Switch a play in search of Reese Nelson. But Aston Villa there to cut it out. Reese Nelson nips in and steals it back though. And Alex Moreno is out of position now. He does have pace. Almost as much as Reese Nelson himself. Beto in the box and Aston Villa taking their turn to make a meal of it on defence. Matty Cash unable to control the ball and it goes out for an Everton corner which James Garner will cross in. In search of Beto, Aston Villa get their head to it first and clear. James Garner to collect on the left-hand side once more. If somebody could get in the box that would be ideal just one person please there's deal strikes from range that's a risky challenge from Aston Villa and it hasn't paid off I think Emre Chan can be can feel slightly hard done by there I think he got the ball and it's about 50 50 he's got about half of the ball and half of the man and these days that's always going to go so it's going to go down as a free kick. So we do have to Dwight McNeil on the field. We also have James Garner. This is... I mean, Dwight McNeil's our better free kick taker. But this is more in the area for a, for a right footer. So I think we will go with James Garner. I don't think we need to do too much to adjust here in terms of our free kick setup. Just need to get the right power on it. That's so difficult in free kicks this year. James Garner parried away by Emi Martinez. It was a decent attempt. It looked like it was probably going to go narrowly wide. Oh, and I'm not so sure on second glance. I think Emi Martinez has saved his side from conceding a goal there. I wasn't certain when I first saw it that it was going into the top corner, but it... On the replay, it certainly looked like it was. There's Beto from the corner again. Can't win the header. It looked like almost a free one. And Beto doesn't end up getting anything on it. Justin throws it in. There's Onana. Too slow to release the ball. You've got to act quicker than that. Don't have time to be dithering on the ball. 2 0 down. That's poor from Diaby. Reese Nelson again is going to take on Alex Moreno for pace. And this time he's managed to skip away from him. Again, nobody in the box. James Garner. Beto. Can't get there. It's looking a lot more promising. Here in this second half than it did in the first. But there's only about half an hour left to go in the game. Maybe not even that. And we are still 2-0 down. So we're going to have to get the ball... In the back of the net, actually take advantage of this attacking pressure 
at some point if we are going to get a result here. Nathan Patterson needs some support. Instead, he has to go back to Armad Dodic. There's Ben Godfrey. I'm going to do Onana in a bit of space. Dwight McNeil outside him and up ahead of him. Matty Cash cuts it out, though. Dealt with well by Aston Villa. Dwight McNeil trying to win the ball back from Matty Cash and Leon Bailey. Can't do it, though. Aston Villa gift us possession, though. 20 minutes left. I think we're going to make another change or two here. Aston Villa doing the same. Morgan Rogers coming off for John McGinn. And we'll see what Graham Potter's got up his sleeve. Just a single change for Graham Potter. Still has three left to make in the game, but it's going to be James Garner off for Abdelaide Decore for now. 20 minutes to go plus stoppage time. And we need a goal. Abdelaide Decore more of a threat in that regard than James Garner. Justin Deal skips away from a couple of Aston Villa players. Lays it out in front of Nathan Patterson. He finds Reese Nelson. Beto in space in the box. Dealt with well by Aston Villa. Good communication there, which is what we lacked with that first goal. Justin Deal. Tackled from behind. Diaby. On his last legs by the looks of it, Diaby. He's worked hard today and he's got his goal as reward. Nathan Patson cuts that out well and we could be away here on this left-hand side. Again, these are exactly the spaces that I said we should be trying to exploit in the first half. But we just don't have players up in support. Aston Villa with several players in the box ready to defend. And we just don't have the players forward. We are finding those spaces in behind those fullbacks now. But once Reese Nelson finds himself with the ball at his feet behind the Aston Villa back line, there's nobody to aim for in the box. And the Martinez again just about deals with the corner. Patterson wins the header, knocks it down to Reese Nelson. Again, we'll just drive at the Aston Villa back line. Lofted into the box, and again, Emmy Martinez is quick off his line to prevent Beto from getting there first. Justin Deal, nice little turn. Nothing on ahead of him, though. Instead, he's just going to shoot from range himself. What a save by Emmy Martinez. Really good effort from Justin Deal. Very few support runs being made up ahead of him, so he just had to take it on himself. James Justin tries to find him again, but cut out before the ball reached Deal this time. He looks very good, Justin Deal. He looks exactly the kind of player that we've been searching for, for that centre-forward false nine kind of role. Good with the ball at his feet, a lot of pace about him. Almost as good passing the ball as he is finishing which is something that is essential for that false nine kind of role. Again, we're laying for Beto here, and again, Emi Martinez is off his line. Every time he's been first to the ball in those situations, and that's just unacceptable. How can we expect to get a win when the opposition goalkeeper is the first to every single cross? We have to get there before him. It's our own fault. Nobody's making those runs across the six-yard box. There's only so much Beto can do. He's the target man in the center of the penalty area. But he needs support from the likes of McNeil and Nelson. Justin finds McNeil. Azama Dodjic. Nathan Patterson. Gives it away. Rhys Nelson just needed to drop in there and pick the ball up from Nathan Patterson. Instead, he tried to make a run in behind. Good challenge, Nathan Patterson. Flips it up the line towards Beto. Just nods it out in front of Rhys Nelson, but again, he's not on the front foot. He's had an off game today, Rhys Nelson. It's been one of our better players over the course of the season so far, but he's, he's not had it today. Moreno's done a good job of dealing with him on that left-hand side. Good save, Jordan Pickford. Could have been three there and the game completely put to bed. White McNeil does really well. Really strong play to skip away from Matty Cash. 
But what's he going to do now? What is he going to do now? There's just, there's nothing. There's absolutely nothing. Aston Villa have just been so quick in transition. As soon as they lose the ball, they drop nine or ten players in. And they get back so quickly. Good challenge, Justin McNeil. Here we go again. I mean, all we have is Beto. We have a long ball up to Beto. That's, that's the only option that's on for Dwight McNeil. It was last time. And he ended up holding on to the ball and giving it away. This time he releases it and it's just a a long, hopeful ball up to Beto. It's just... They've come with their game plan today, Aston Villa, and, and they've executed it to perfection. We've really helped them out with those early goals. We gave them a 1-0 head start, basically. Good block. And away by Amajodzic. One by Deal. Again, Aston Villa are there. Bore this time. James Justin loses out. Good challenge. Deal lays it off for Decore. But the final whistle goes. We just had nothing going forward today. And we lose 2-0 to Aston Villa as a result. I mean, we defended excellently for 70 minutes in that game. It's just the first 20 minutes we gifted Aston Villa two goals. So the preceding 70 minutes were, were basically meaningless. It doesn't matter how well you defend over the course of the following 70 minutes. If you give the opposition two goals in the opening 20 and that's exactly what happened here today so I don't think we can complain about the victory at all in, in terms of uh, you know an injustice it's an unfair victory in some way I certainly think we can complain in terms of our performance though so not the game that I was expecting not the result I was hoping for before we went into this game against Aston Villa at Goodison Park not the debut that James Justin was probably hoping for either he wasn't awful today by any means but probably didn't quite make the impact that he would be hoping to make and that Graham Potter would have been hoping to see him make in his first game at Everton and after the game there was an email waiting for Graham Potter in his inbox and once his PTSD had settled down somewhat and he finally brought himself to actually open it he was relieved to see there was a scouting report rather than another injury report and there's actually a couple of interesting players on this particular report two very similar players as well Ronnie Bowden and Jordan Atkinson both 15 years old both play across the front line really in a number 10 role as a striker or as a winger on either side um, I would say the biggest difference between the two players is that Ronnie Bowden at this point in time looks to be the better athlete whereas Jordan Atkinson looks to be the more well-rounded technically Ronnie Bowden has a narrower potential range and a, a higher potential floor at 81 However, he is only worth 1 million, whereas Jordan Atkinson has a slightly broader range with a lower floor at 76, but he is worth 1.4 million. So it seems that maybe Ronnie Bowden's potential is slightly higher, but Atkinson's current overall is slightly higher. And whilst I would be happy enough to sign either prospect, of course, it's not just up to us. We do have to input information about each prospect into Buzzco's prospect signing calculator to determine whether they would be interested in signing with us. And unfortunately, when we do that for Ronnie Bowden, because of that incredibly high and narrow potential range, he does have a 0% chance of wanting to sign with us. So Ronnie Bowden, unfortunately, is out of the question. And our chances of signing Jordan Atkinson aren't much better, but 20% is better than zero. And 85 potential is what Jordan Atkinson has. He is a domestic prospect being from England so we will attempt to sign Jordan Atkinson and unfortunately we fail to do so so two really hot prospects neither of which are willing to join our youth academy and this was the danger of failing to invest in our youth academy early on unfortunately it does mean that we are not going to be a desired location for prospects like this to sign and we do unfortunately have to release those players and this is something that I was worried about heading into this January transfer window we have received an offer for Jordan Pickford almost 28 million from Bayer Leverkusen and there's a chance we might be forced to accept this however fortunately we are able to reject this offer and that's exactly what we will do 
we could get as much as 30 and a half million for Jordan Pickford and that money would obviously go a long way if we were to reinvest it into the squad but we would need to replace our number one goalkeeper a man who's been at Everton for such a long time and who has a crucial squad role at the moment and it's just not worth it. While Leverkusen did lose Lukas Radecki to RB Leipzig, but they do have Matej Kovar, who is a promising young goalkeeper and should be able to step up into the number one role. Which takes us on to our next game, and it's actually going to be a fourth game added to the episode as we have our fourth round cup game versus Swansea scheduled for the end of the month, as well as that trip down to Craven Cottage to round out the month for the Premier League. Graham Potter's rotated the 11 again for this FA Cup clash at Goodison Park. Noah and Bamber again coming into the back five. Ja Virginia replacing Pickford in goal. It's going to be Abdullah Dekore and Adrissa Gay to form a new defensive partnership in midfield. And Justin Deal makes another start in that false nine role alongside Reese Nelson and Lewis Dobbin. And there weren't too many highlights at all to show from this game. It was a pretty dull affair until Reese Nelson scored another one of his wonder goals. We've seen him do this on a handful of occasions so far this season, picking up the ball, going on a mazy run, and then unleashing a strike from just outside the penalty area. But although the goal was a late one, we still found time to allow Swansea back into the game. Some poor defending in the box gave Jamie Patterson some room to shoot. And he made no mistake, burying the chance and setting up a second fixture in an FA Cup replay later in the year. So frustrating that we couldn't get it done against Swansea City and we'll have to see if we can advance to the next round by a return fixture at Swansea City's place. Which brings us to our last game of the episode against Fulham at Craven Cottage. And I can barely even bring myself to show you the highlights from this game. It was one of the most boring, frustrating intolerable games i've played on eafc every bounce went fulham's way every tackle stuck to their feet every interception i made bounced straight back to one of their players and then amin adley finally scored on the hour mark to give fulham the lead and we were never going to come back from just that single goal deficit we didn't receive any significant offers before the transfer window closed but there were some other high profile arrivals and departures in the premier league bernardo silva finally left man city to join barcelona for 90 million liverpool added an attacking midfielder of their own from athletic bilbao manchester united strengthened their back line by signing deo upa Meccano, and arsenal allowed thomas Partey to leave for Borussia Dortmund. So with January in the books, we currently find ourselves sitting in 14th place in the Premier League, still eight points above the relegation zone and Nottingham Forest who sit on 17 points. Whilst at the top of the table, Manchester City continue to lead the way, but Arsenal have done a remarkable job in tracking them down and now just sit three points behind the league leaders in second place. And suddenly our last result doesn't look so bad as Fulham's remarkable season continues and they currently find themselves in a Europa League spot. Looking ahead to February, we have some tough fixtures ahead of us, including a trip to the Amex for Graham Potter to visit his former club Brighton. But first we'll be taking on Tottenham Hotspur, a return fixture against Swansea in the FA Cup, and then travelling to the Etihad to face down Manchester City. So we'll look forward to that in the next episode. I hope to see you there. Take it easy.